Yeah, I, 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 I think it does. And um, so, so we could take the problem itself, which would be something like, uh, well, first of all, it's a problem for someone who is a religious believer. And the problem is, if I'm a religious believer, and if the sort of God I believe in is supposed to be an all-loving God, an all-powerful God, a God who wants a relationship with his creation, uh, well, then why is it that God doesn't reveal himself to everyone? Why isn't our evidence for God or our knowledge of God just more obvious and easy? So, uh, in a sense, a believer has some explaining to do. Uh, so it's a problem, uh, it's, it's, it's that sort of problem uh, to explain why isn't God uh, equally available to everyone. We can think about how different people uh, testify to having a, di uh, a different uh, levels of experience of God in their lives. Some people think that they experience God at every moment in their lives in all sorts of uh, ways that make it obvious to them that God is present to them. Other people claim that they have no experience of God. So why, how do we explain that? Um, well, I think that one way that uh, a kind of social turn here uh, can help us is to understand how by living in different social contexts, by occupying different social locations, so to speak, we are differently positioned evidentially or epistemically. So it might be that by virtue of living in a certain kind of community where I have uh, say, uh, people who are spiritual, you know, further along than I am spiritually, uh, they can tell me about their religious experiences and they can help me to reflect on my own experiences. And there's a kind of teacher-student or mentor-mentee relationship uh, that helps my own epistemic position by being in that context. Whereas somebody else in a different epistemic community that doesn't have that kind of expert available to themselves for the purpose of teaching, for the purpose of mentoring, et cetera, they might have a, a more limited uh, epistemic access. So you can see, obviously, um, like very quickly, once you take into consideration the importance of social environment for epistemic position, you can see that uh, we're, 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 uh, it's easy to see that we're in very different epistemic positions depending on which, what social environment uh, we inhabit. Now one other way which this is uh, uh, particularly, uh, I think, relevant to the problem of divine hiddenness is not so much with solving the problem but with rejecting a certain kind of answer to that problem. So, uh, for the uh, going way back in the Christian tradition, one typical answer to the question, why doesn't everyone have experience of God in their lives? One, one typical answer is that, well, it's not God's fault, it's some people resist. So it's not that, it's the, we don't have to explain why a loving God wouldn't make him self available to everyone, he does. But some people don't want to hear it, they, they, they resist. And so the, the explanation of non-belief is basically to find some kind of flaw in the non-believer. It might be a moral flaw because for reasons of pride or whatever they resist uh, acknowledging God's presence or it might be an intellectual flaw, they're somehow in spiritually blind or it might be some kind of combination uh, of those things. So the explanation of unbelief then becomes a flaw in uh, the, uh, in, in the uh, non-believer. Now, from a certain perspective, that's really the only explanation you can give because uh, th th there doesn't seem to be any other explanation available. The evidence seems to be there for everyone equally. If someone's not getting it, it must be some problem with them, right? So that's a, that's a common answer, but it's a, it's, it's, it's a bit of an ugly answer. Um, it, it's, it, 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 it's an answer that uh, not everybody would be uh, comfortable giving. Uh, it's awkward at the very least. Uh, 
So uh, is there something else we can say? Is there something better we can say? Uh, well, again, I think that a social turn helps us to, to, to say something better. Uh, again, by virtue of being located in uh, a, a different social context, by virtue of having a different social location, we also are located uh, in a different epistemic situation. It might be that um, the reason one person has good evidence for something and another person doesn't have very good evidence at all uh, for the same thing is not because there's any flaw in them, but just they occupy a different space, so to speak, uh, uh, a different social space and therefore a different um, uh, epistemic space. And so what that, uh, what, what that tells us is that it can be very important epistemically what communities you're a part of and uh, what personal relationships you have uh, to other people. That's not a, uh, that, that, that's not a very surprising point, uh, but you do have to start thinking in these social terms uh, to get it on the radar screen in, in, in the first place. And unfortunately, uh, in, in, in much of our traditional religious epistemology, it just isn't sufficiently on the radar screen or hasn't been in order, in order to appreciate that.